Turn out our continuing series, God, Country, Notre Dame, The Clash with the Klan. A hundred years ago this week, the KKK attempted to make inroads in a part of Indiana they had yet to truly galvanize. We're talking about South Bend, of course. Its growing Catholic population is why the Klan decided to hold a parade and rally here. But the plans didn't go as planned for the group, with students battling Klan members in the street of downtown South Bend as a way to defend their religion and place in a country where social and religious ideals we're rapidly changing. May 17, 1924, Notre Dame uh, gathered some community members together and actually determined that they were not going to allow a Klan rally to occur here. Notre Dame's history is intertwined with this broader question of could Catholics become American? <laughs> May 17, 1924 marked a turning point for two rising institutions, Notre Dame and the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> the KKK hoped a rally in South Bend, a Catholic stronghold at the time, would be beneficial to expanding its anti-Catholic and anti-immigrant grip of power in the state of Indiana, while also spreading its native white Protestant supremacy. But for Notre Dame students, which was all male and mostly Catholic at the time, this was a battle for something deeper. It was a time when Notre Dame was growing, and here was an organization that was saying very explicitly that because Notre Dame students were mostly Catholic, they couldn't be considered good Americans. And so students were upset about that and wanted to challenge that. Kathleen Sprose Cummings is a professor of history and American studies at the University of Notre Dame. It's a course explaining the interplay between the university, the Catholic Church, and the United States. Anti-Catholicism was, was very much on the rise, but it also had to do with the fact that Catholics were becoming more powerful. They were, in the case of the Irish, farther removed from that immigrant generation, so they were making inroads and, and claiming political power and claiming power in the economy and in other ways, too. So it was also a reaction against Catholics taking power away from real Americans in the eyes of Clan members. Notre Dame looked a whole lot different back then before the fighting. In fact, a lot changed after the fighting, especially because most students lived off campus. The events of May of 1924, that really provided an impetus for a building boom on campus to say, let's build more dorms and let's build a dining hall. Some of the fighting involved the use of a particular food item one might find in a dining hall. The students started to throw potatoes, actually, at the Klan headquarters at the corner of Michigan and Wayne. There was a grocery store right underneath that. So, of course, throwing potatoes, the Irish associated with potatoes, it was a way to kind of take, um, take what had been used against them and to assert themselves as Americans. The ascendancy of the two very different institutions in America came face to face on this corner, Michigan and Wayne. It has been said history shows us a window into our past. That mantra? couldn't be truer here. Where are we right now, Brian? We are in Buter Kernan Hall uh, in the Community Learning Center of St. Joseph County Public Library in downtown South Bend. This is Brian Harding, the executive director of the History Museum in South Bend. He's overseeing an exhibit showcasing what happened 100 years ago. It'll be on display here near these windows overlooking one of the most important corners in this city's history. Our primary mission is to educate and educating individuals on what did happen, on educating on, on the processes that, that individuals felt was right at the time. It's a moment in time inextricably linked to Catholics and a certain term you may have heard before. With the intolerance that was there and the Notre Dame students fighting that intolerance, which was not the first time the fighting Irish term was actually utilized, but it was one of those that helped begin to solidify that reputation of Notre Dame of fighting, fighting intolerance. It's an almost uneasy reality when looking into our archive room to find these images, not from 100 years ago, but from the early 2000s in St. Joseph County. Do not turn your back on the cross, back up. Images of cross burnings on Ash Road to a peaceful Klan march on a city block in town, which our own Mark Peterson covered at the time. For the most part, the protest has been peaceful, despite the fact that there are about 15 Klan's persons here and probably close to about 200, maybe even 250 onlookers, most of them who are here to oppose the Klan's visit. Our team reached out to who we believe to be relatives of former known KKK leaders in St. Joe County. I have no interest, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. 
Back on campus, Professor Cummings took me to the World War I Memorial Doors, the entrance into the Basilica of the Sacred Heart. Today we know those as the God Country Notre Dame Doors because that inscription is right over the doors. But there's also plaques on which the name of Notre Dame students who died in World War I. But the official dedication was on Memorial Day 1924, just two weeks after the Klan rally. I get a chill just thinking about it. Can you imagine having this very moving ceremony that is linking religion, this is in the Basilica, to patriotism? are war dead. Can you imagine what that dedication ceremony must have been like? Many of the students who would have gone down to South Bend to fight off the Klan would have been attending that. And President Walsh, Father Matthew Walsh, would have said again how important it was to the Catholic story and the American story, how important Notre Dame was. And now the university we know today is ever growing, a symbol of God, country, Notre Dame, and home of the Fighting Irish. Meanwhile, this entire story is being depicted right now as part of a new exhibit, which just opened today. We want to take you inside. This is your first look at it inside the Community Learning Center of the St. Joe County Library. Artifacts from the History Museum archives will provide local evidence of KKK activity, both at the time of this clash in 1924 and even, yes, in more modern times. You can see the window there that we looked out of. That is now a part of that exhibit. That is what you would have seen back in 1924. Also included in the exhibit is a multimedia experience telling the story of the confrontation as visitors will also see a dynamic moving background showing what happened along with the perspective of four different characters. And Josh, there really is so much to this story. There's even more. Yeah, there's so much more. We weren't able to tell. The football team had a central role in this as well. Wow. The quarterback was seen out there throwing potatoes to Newt Rockney, who was on the courthouse steps at the time, telling the students to go back to campus, get away from the fighting. So many parts of this where you pull the threads apart, but the one thing that I am just so riveted by is the bravery yeah. of those students at the time. And honestly, I knew nothing about this story. Has that reaction been the same way that people are saying, hey, I never knew about this yes. history, it, really? I think it is. It, the, the thing that I've noticed the most from our viewers is that mm -hmm. they've heard of this story, but they didn't know the details of right. the story. They didn't know why the KKK wanted to come here. Um, and the fact that they did and the fact that they're now wow. learning the backstory, if you will, says a lot about history yeah. um, and just in general. And to know that history is important. By the way, I want to say thank you to Kamika Perry and Eric Walton, who visually helped out because mm -hmm. we don't have too much video from 1924. No, Eric is <laughs> such a great drawer. And I mean, you did such a great job thank with you. that report. And I know you did a report last night and you've been working hard at it. And it yeah, shows. That's a lot of heavy Good. lifting, but it's, it's a story that needed to be told. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we'll be right back. Stay there.